This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News, News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Well, I'm your host for tonight, uh, Mr. Artivis, and tonight we have a special guest on, uh, Eric O202. Are you out there? I am here. Uh, Mr. Willie Jolly, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing terrific. How are you? I'm all right. This is world famous motivational sensation, Mr. Willie Jolly. Uh, Jolly Mr. Jolly, I like to thank you first and foremost for you. Coming on, we all be radio tonight. I know you're a very busy man, and it's such an honor and privilege to have you on today, sir. Honor to be with you. Yes, sir. And with, before we get down to business, I'd like to have you explain yourself to the people out here that's listening right now. Exactly, exactly who is Willie Jolly? Well, I am a speaker and author. I was, a formerly, a, I was formerly a singer who became a, a professional speaker and have over the last year, I mean, last few years, been very uh, blessed to be able to be named one of the outstanding five speakers in the world by Toastmasters International, to be inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame, and to have two best-selling books and a syndicated radio show. And now I speak literally around the world, helping people to rise above their circumstances and maximize their potential and live their dreams. So I'm very blessed to be able to do what I do for a living. I guess that we are really blessed to have you today to bless us with your knowledge. Uh, i got four questions. To ask you. Okay. Now you now you say it only takes a minute to change your life. That's correct. Well, now what has been your defining life affirmation or the series of defining moments that place you on this life journey? Okay. Well, I say that the, it only takes a minute to change your life. That's the name of my book. Uh, my first book that I'm very thankful has gone on to be an international bestseller and has now been translated into eight languages and is doing very well around the world. But in this book, I talk about the fact it only takes a minute to change your life. The minute you make a decision and move in a new direction is the minute you change your life. You may not reach your destination in a minute, but you certainly can change your direction in a minute. And the minute you make that decision and change your direction, you change your life. That's, uh, that sounds great. Congratulations on your book, uh, Becoming Such a Great Bestseller Worldwide. That's really a phenomenal achievement. Well, I'm very and thankful. Other achievements as well. Yes, I'm very thankful for it. I have an attitude of gratitude. Let's put it like that. I have yes, an sir. attitude of gratitude. Now, who would be your most important inspiration? Like, you got any influences? Like, you know, well, my faith is my number one inspiration. Mm-hmm. I am a Christian, and I believe that the, that the Bible is the greatest success book that was ever written. Mm-hmm. And if you read it with the eyes and the lens through the lens of self-development, personal development, success, and as well as living and doing those things which will have an impact on the lives of others, you'll see mm-hmm. that the rival is an incredible tool to help you to get principles and strategies and techniques to impact your future, your success, as well as the future of other people and helping people to go to the next level, grow to the next level, do bigger and better things in the future, and to really live their dreams. Yes, sir. Now, speaking of the Bible and uh, the story about the talents, I'd like to ask you, of your many talents, what do you, what do you feel is your first love? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say my first love is the one that I started with, which was singing, but the one I enjoy the most is speaking because it impacts people in such a powerful place and way and it's and it and because I I mix the singing with the speaking, it has had a tremendous impact on on people's businesses and lives, and and so I'm very thankful for that. Yes, sir. Now I like to ask you too, because you you're based out of Washington D.C. This is your hometown, correct? That's correct. And what has kept you in Washington D.C.? Why not New York or L.A. or any other place? Well, one is because I really have enjoyed living in Washington, and as a speaker. It really doesn't make that diff- much different where you live as long as there's an airport around. I got you. Okay? <laughs> yes, sir. In fact, I came in from the airport just an hour ago, uh, and I was in Minneapolis speaking last night. But in terms of moving to somewhere else, in terms of the music industry, now, there is some truth to the fact if I had been, if I remained in the music industry, it would have been a necessity or a an advantage to live in New York, Nashville, Atlanta, or uh, L.A. But because I now am a speaker and an author and the music is a 
is a secondary part of my business as well as my delivery, then it's not a, it's not anywhere near critical or what is is important. In fact, it's it's not important much at all because most speakers don't live in. And uh, very few of my speaker friends live actually in New York or in uh, L.A., a few but not many. Most of them live in, in smaller towns where they can have, uh, they can be the big fish in the, in, in the small pond. I got you. Mm-hmm. But you chose to live in D.C., though, so Zach, I mean, you, you're among a lot of big fishes in D.C., correct? Yeah, a lot of big fish in D.C., but not a lot of motivational speakers. And so I'm very thankful that I'm able to, to stay pretty busy right here in my own backyard and doing a lot of work in, in the area, and so we're very thankful for that. Could, is, is there anything you would change about the path that you're currently on, that you have chosen? See, path? The path. Uh, the if I, um, I think I would have made a commitment to go to go harder, faster, stronger, first class earlier. I, there were some things that I did that were, were uh, good, but I thought I could, I really think if I had had a chance to do something different, I would do uh, do everything I've done the same, but I just do it faster, first class, first class a lot quicker. What do you think has stopped you? Had, were you supported by your family members? Well, I think so part of it is, you, you know, you, 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 you focus on your comfort zone, and that's one of the things that I'm always trying to tell people to do is to, to find your comfort zone, but then be willing to leave it. And mm-hmm. uh, And so I'm now in a point where I am looking at looking at other cities, but because I built my business here and my mother was here for many years till she passed, mm-hmm. I, I stayed closer to home so I could be near her as she got older. But um, now we're looking at other places because she passed away a couple of years ago, and we're looking at uh, some other options and some other cities where we can do a little more uh, in terms of growing our our activities at another level. I just find an interest looking at your background as an entertainer, as a musician, that a lot of our, you know, uh, black leaders seem like they had a background in entertainment or people that stand out are very well spoken and articulate people. And I think about uh Al Sharpton working with James Brown or Farrakhan who was a Calypso singer before he became what he is today. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, wait, why is it that entertainers are able to uh become such great leaders or orators in your mind? Well, I think part of that is because the number one fear in America, or in, uh, not just in America, the number one fear across the border anywhere is speaking. Public speaking is the number one fear. Mm-hmm. And therefore, many people are afraid to get in front of an audience and talk. Mm-hmm. And so when you've got someone like myself who was an entertainer who overcame that issue early on I've been used to being in front of people all my life then that was an issue that that gave me an advantage because I was already ahead of the game because I didn't have that fear see and once you overcome that fear then you start working on your message and crafting your message and captivating an audience so if you could do that and you don't have the fear, it puts you at an advantage. And I think that's one of the things that, that we see with a lot of the great orators is that they already are in front of people. They're used to being in front of people, and then they, they understand some of the strategies, techniques, and, and principles that help you to reach people, to captivate them, to, to inspire them, or to, or to entertain them, or catch their attention. And when you do that, you can just add on by trying to to help them to live different uh, another life at another level. And please feel free to call in and join this conversation with this motivational guru known as Mr. Willie Jolly. Uh, the call in number is 646-652-4593. Or if you're scared and you're afraid to speak your mind on the air, uh, please give us an email drop at r2c2h2 at gmail.com. That's R2C2H2 at gmail.com. Now, I want to uh, ask you a question because we're talking about comfort zones and fear. What is the most important trait that you can have to become a successful in whatever you do, whatever endeavor you tend to commit yourself to? What is the most important trait that one can possess? The number one thing for, for anybody to have success is that you've got to have a, a, a vision or a dream for where you're going. That's the number mm-hmm. one thing. 
without a question of a doubt. Where are you going? You know, it's like the story of Alice in Wonderland. Alice is going down a road. She comes upon a fork in the road. She's not sure which way to go. So she looks up in the tree and there's a Cheshire cat. She says, which way should I go? He said, where are you going, little girl? She says, I don't know. He said, well, then any road will do. And what that says is most people go through life just having no real idea where they're trying to go, what they're trying to achieve, and any road will do. But if you've got a vision for your life, then you start to move toward that vision, toward that goal, and you start using your energies to go toward it, and you will start to get steam and momentum, and things will start to happen toward that goal that will blow your mind. But if you have no direction, you know, Scripture says without a vision, a people will perish. What goes unsaid there is that with a vision, a people will flourish. They will prosper. So what is your vision? You've got to have a vision if you're going to, if you're going to have great success in this world. So do you consider what you're doing more than speaking that this is your ministry? That's exactly right. You're exactly right. I see it as ministry. I see it as a way to inspire and encourage and lift people's spirits who are struggling. Struggling with their own their own issues in life, their own circumstances. They struggling with the fact that things haven't always gone the way they wanted them to go. So I want to encourage people. I want to I want to be a blessing to them. And I want to let them know that their best is yet to come. Okay, let me ask you this. Speaking of the best that is yet to come, how do you get audiences to attend your functions, and how do you promote it to make them want to come? Well, it depends on, let me tell you, I, I speak at lots of different kind of functions, first of all. Mm -hmm. Like last night, I spoke at a, a big success rally in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. But on this Sunday, I'll be speaking at a big church function. Or I might speak at a corporation like a Dell Computers or Walmart or, or uh, Chase Manhattan Bank or, or Verizon. And so I do different types of events. Now, if it's a public event, which is what you're talking about, how do we get people to come? Same way we get people to buy my books, tapes, and videos. We let them know that this will change your life. This will help you to live your dreams. This will help you to take your, your success to the next level. And if I can help them to do that and, and share that through the materials that we will send out, then people say, well, I want to change my life. I want to, I want to live my dreams. I want to make more money. I want to have a better quality of life. And so if that will help them to do it, and I, and I share that, the, some, of the, some of the stories, like the, my new product just came out called Money Making Music. In minutes, mm. it's available at Amazon. It's available at my website, which is wjspeaks.com. It's available at many of the major bookstores around the country and record stores. It's a motivational music, motivational minutes, and and DVD and a book all in one package. It's a success package, and it's incredible. Well, one man listened to it for thirty days, and he doubled mm. his business. Wow. One lady, she listened to it and started listening to it in her car as she took her kids to school, and their grades went up. Mm. Some people who've been depressed, who've been suffering from depression, started listening to it just to lift their spirits, and they felt better. They didn't need their medication that day. I don't know what it is that what will and how it will impact you, but I do know it works. And so, if you find something that works and it and it works with others, it will work for you and other people. Then then it'll start to have an impact. I would actually speak on all this stuff. That's very powerful what you're saying and what you're doing. I commend you uh, from one artist to another because I think you are an artist. Yes. You know, you got a, a level of mastery of what you're doing. And I also, I've been having this conversation with a lot of people over the past several weeks. Uh, when you have a gift, it seems like sometimes it's not really for you. It's for the world. It's for other people because you look at a lot of our, our great artists. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have a lot of spiritual and demonic possession or something going on. But yet they were able to make these beautiful things. But yet it wasn't really it wasn't really appreciated for it, or they didn't understand their own value. Like, how do you understand your own value? What it took for you to understand how valuable you really were, and what you're doing is very valuable. Well, once I realized that people's lives were being changed, I knew something was happening. Mm -hmm. I was in Japan and went to a army base to speak. Mm -hmm. And I got to the base and had to go through the security. 
and the young man who was there was the <clears throat> captain of the base and or the sergeant. I don't know what he was. He was the, he was the com- commanding officer that evening on the security detail. And so I gave him my identification card, my ID, mm-hmm. my information, and he looked and said, "Wow, you're Willie Jolly." I said, "Yeah." He said, "You're the Willie Jolly who speaks." I said, "Yeah." He said, "You came to my high school in 1993, and the reason I'm a captain now, or whatever his rank was, the reason I'm I'm an official now in the army is because you said this message, and the message was the Dream Buster message, and there were three Dream Dream Busters. Dot dot dot. I said, "Yes." He said, "I told my father about it. I told my brothers about it. I would quote that, and it, it inspired me." And I knew there was something bigger and better for me to do in my life than to hang out with the people I've been hanging out with, doing doing things that I knew were not right. And I started changing because I heard you speak. Mm. Another guy. I recently spoke for the Prince George's County um, Council, mm-hmm. and the young man who is the new uh, council member for. Mm-hmm. One of the one of the areas. When I finished speaking, he said, "You won't. You don't remember me, but I remember you. You came to my high school, and you told a story about your friend who who never gave up, and how he became successful because he never gave up. And so, when I decided to run for this office, I said." Mr. Jolly talked about that guy who never gave up. And so I would refuse to give up, even when the poll said I was going to lose, when people said I didn't have enough money, that I didn't have enough connections. I kept remembering your speech, and I said I can do it. And I'd sleep on the floor at night to remind myself, never give up. He said, I won. I won. Wow. So that's when I knew I was on the right path. Oh man, that's incredible! And like, oh, I got you know the old saying that no good deed goes unpunished. So I had to ask you, how do you deal with the jealousy and envy of peers and others, the haters? I don't deal with them. <laughs> I don't deal with them. See, uh, what, there's an old saying that says, "What you think about me? What? How, how did? How does it go? Uh, you, how you think about me is?" Your business, not my mm-hmm. business, and right. so I'm, I don't dwell on it. You, you're gonna get negative people. I don't. I, I don't even dwell on negative. I don't do drama. Mm-hmm. I don't even do it because see, negative is, is toxic. People are gonna talk about you. People right. are gonna not like you. That's their. That's their business. They can. They can talk. They can say what they want. But I don't have to be a party. Party to it. You know, Eleanor Roosevelt said that. What somebody says about you is their business until you, until you accept it. We're back on the air. We're looking for Mr. Willie Jolly. And uh, anybody call back in, we'll be having some technical difficulties. Uh, technical difficulties, but hopefully, please call back in. Uh, error code 646-652-4593. That's error code 642. I mean, 646-652-4593. You can email us at r2c2h2 at gmail.com. I'm um, sorry for the technical difficulties. I don't know what's really going on, but that's what happens when you're doing a live show. And so please bear with me because this is a very important message that y'all are hearing today on the We All Be Radio. And uh, Mr. Willie Jolly, motivational guru in the uh, Hall of Fame for Speakers, will be back on with us shortly. But so please tune in to We All Be Radio every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central. And also, please visit the alternative news blog known as weallbe.blogspot.com. That's very important as well. But we wait on Mr. Jolly, and if anybody heard anything in the first 20 minutes of this conversation and would like to comment on what you heard, feel free to do so. And also, please visit Mr. Willie Jolly's official website at www.willyjolly dot com. That's www.williejolly.com. And if you miss Sundays, uh, we all be. It was definitely a treat. I, I think about Mr. Willie Jolly. And call three one four. 
Hi, this is uh, Steve. Hey, Steve, how you doing, sir? I don't know what's going down, man. Like, the devil's been busy with my phones and my radio show. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. I, I was listening in, and I, it sounds like there, were, there was probably, uh, probably an issue with Block Talk Radio. Maybe they were having a server problem. Yes. So, have you, you had a chance to listen to what Mr. Jolly has been saying so far? I did, and uh, I think I, I called in just just as uh, he. I, guess, I think he, he he took a few moments to, to try to try to see if there were others listening in, or or if you were still there. But I think I think after uh, you know a few attempts, I think he he probably hung up, and uh, you know realizing there was some kind of uh, probably technical difficulties. Yeah, I think he is, but I'm sure we'll get him on shortly because I think he got an important message today. And you also uh, you are a motivational person in your own right. You are uh, on Central B Media. You're the visionary behind Central B Media. Can you please explain to the listeners what Central B Media is all about? Well, I think uh, you know, in, internally and uh, increasingly publicly, we're we're basically basically uh, breaking down this idea of sustainability into uh, security, accessibility, and uh, and and community, and uh, basically. There, there. Right now, there are there are a few central B companies, but the heart of what we do is uh, is consulting in the sense that you know we, we listen to uh, on the technology side, we listen to to uh, companies' goals, their interests, where they are, and and we we advise uh, on the technology front, uh, on the on the operations front, and and we have we have a lot of imagination and creativity and and how to use technology and. And to, to tie those concepts together, you know, community accessibility and security for for a more you know self-sustaining uh, you know business or, or or organization. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, you're pretty humble, Mr. Mr. Broner, because also you know, I do a lot of work with uh, minority and small businesses. Can you please explain to us what you do with them. Try to help them get their visibility up. Well. Um, I think uh, you know over the years uh, we, we've 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 worked with a, a pretty broad uh, array of organizations, and I, I think consistently we, we've had a, a focus on on smaller business and smaller organizations. And uh, for for the most part, uh, you know we help a lot of organizations to make that trans- transition from being offline to you know being being visible on the web or to to use newer technologies you know maybe cost savings through uh, maybe voice new voice technologies and uh, you know ways to basically use their existing resources in new ways uh, you know a lot of times uh, people uh, people they, they look to uh, you know maybe maybe to save money by by cutting back or or by uh, you know by Maybe reducing the resources, and sometimes, sometimes uh, it, it helps to have a you know a creative outlook uh, to basically to 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 see maybe maybe new dimensions of existing resources, and whether 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 that's uh, maybe an existing uh, you know group of people or certain individuals you know uh, taking uh, taking uh, taking count and reassessing you know, maybe uh, skill sets that can be used in new ways and. And we, you know, we we basically do a lot of listening initially, and and then we make a lot of uh, a lot of suggestions, and and for the most part, uh, we're able to to help others to to recognize uh, new new useful uh, t- technologies and directions, and and uh, save money. But but I think uh, you know the most fun you know for me personally, and and for for others who've been involved, basically is has been just. Uh, just you know, just the the diversity of, of business that's that's growing, especially especially now with with all the you know the new mediums and 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 uh, you know social change is just uh, you know it's every every day there there are new ideas coming to life. That sounds great. Now we got uh, Mr. Willie Jolly back on the phone. I do apologize, sir, uh, for I don't know what's going on. Well, stuff happens. Yeah, stuff happens. Man. I, you know, what I love about the fact that we have you on today, sir. The fact that. You understand when stuff happens, this is when you need to start doing things. Because I know somebody once told me that there are two types of people in the world, those who make things happen and those who let things happen to them. That's, the, the, that's, that's part of the, the truth there. You, you're absolutely right. And, you know, and you've got you to gotta make things happen. Mm-hmm. So you know, we have... Go ahead. We got, 
And we got two people on here. We got Mr. Willie Jolly and Mr. Steve Bruno of Central B Media. These are two visionaries. They're making it happen through their own God-given talents and gifts. And Mr. Willie Jolly, I'd like to ask you another thing. Is um, I think it's very important. Like, I mean, I know you're an African American man, and I know you had did some work with the D.C. public school system, and I know you know that you know it's, it's, it's an interesting like uh, thing going on with our African American males. Right now, how, and now how can you uh, you know? I mean, what do you think is the most important thing that uh, we as a society, or in, as well as individuals? can do to try to help out our African-American male? Well, I think that we must all take full responsibility for our success. That's what I think. And that's the that's thing, first thing that comes to my mind. And, and, and encourage each other. One of the things, people, you, you know, you asked earlier about what about negative people. You, got, you, can't, you can't respond to negative with negative, so you've got to encourage people. And the way, to, way to, to, to overcome some of the negative is to not be a part of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can't be a part of the of the negative negative issues that people have. And I made a decision a long time ago. I'm not going to be a part of negative issues. I'm not going to be a part of of uh, negative mindset. So I just don't do it. I don't. I don't get involved. I don't do it. I don't. I'm not a party to it. And in mm-hmm. terms of African American helping young men, giving them a model that they can see is a positive, upbeat, integrity-filled model. People need to know. Sometimes people need to see before they can be. Mm -hmm. So they need to see somebody who's walking in it. You know, I think about the people who who motivated me, inspired me when I was growing up, and how I would look at them as a model. And you need to have a model from which to, to, to grow. So you got to see some people who look who look like you or doing some things that are good things that are impactful things and say, okay, that's that's a good model for me to to model after. Well, it makes sense. It definitely do make sense. I know that, uh, I mean, I was talking to uh, Mr. Tom Brothers. He's a Duke University professor of musicology on uh, Sunday. And I was, I was even thinking about the fact that you were a jazz musician. And kind of like it came to my mind again, this guy's a jazz musician too. And, but uh-huh. he's a, he was an expert on Louis Armstrong. And I was asking the same question, because, you know, the conditions that a Louis Armstrong or a James Brown or Richard Pryor grew up in would be considered, like, very detrimental, I mean, detrimental to a child's development. But at the same time, like, Louis Armstrong, for example, his mom was a prostitute. He grew up in a, in a very rough environment called the battlefield. You know, some of his heroes and, 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 and role models were pumped. But at the same time, it's like they, was, they, they understood the, the talent that he possessed. And they really did try to encourage him to lead a straight and narrow path. So, you do you think that the village concept in our time is kind of dead? Oh or no. Just, okay. Oh no, I believe that uh, the village is still actually alive, and and just needs just people just need to see there's a, there's a different way of, of accessing the village through the internet, through through telephones, through text messaging. It's, it's reaching out to your network and, and encouraging people in a lot of different ways. I know. I think Mr. Steve Brunner definitely answers that because Steve, you did work with uh, small businesses and minorities, and I understand you actually designed like a website for Aboriginal people. Uh, sorry about that. I, I uh, had the phone muted so I wouldn't uh, interrupt. I, I, I believe that uh, you know we've we've done a few a few projects that that uh, focus on. On, I guess the, uh, the you know the underdogs are the underdogs. I guess you know in terms of you know society and history, there there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, you know as you as you mentioned uh, you know Aboriginal peoples that uh, basically kind of get swept under the rug, and uh, we've we've made uh, part of part of our, our community outreach in, in those respects has been to want to make resources available to to those uh, who traditionally. Maybe wouldn't have access to them, or maybe would not think to uh, maybe put themselves out there. So one of the one of the kind of fields of research that that we're interested in, uh, you know, not just business wise, but also uh, also just uh, you know from that from that community context, are going ahead and you know looking, you know, not just you know hey in, in North America where where we have you know the I guess uh, what what you know the peoples that. Uh, 
people would call maybe Native Americans, but but also you know the the original peoples of you know South America and and the, you know of course the Maori of of New Zealand and so on and and basically you know reaching out to to representative organizations and communicating to them that well you know this is the time uh, you know in the past it, it may not have been possible to to really have a voice but now it's possible to to have a voice and be heard uh, worldwide and it doesn't have to be expensive and and they can they can actually reach the people who would love to know about them and hear about them and support them and to help their efforts to preserve their culture their language and and so on and a lot of a lot of uh, Aboriginal peoples, actually, in, in different ways, kind of live on, in uh, you know, in, in a lot of uh, in a lot of us, and uh, and so it, it has been very exciting to you know to discover and rediscover. Well, that sounds good, Mr. Willie Jolly. Speaking yes, of, uh, I would like to ask you a question because I know it's about their graduation time. College graduations are coming up real fast in, in the next several weeks, and like you've been given so many uh, jewels of wisdom. And I'd like to ask you, what would be your advice uh, for those college graduates soon to be making it into the workforce? Well, first of all, I want to applaud you for having the kind of foresight you would have to have a show that would even deal with the issues you're already doing at a young age as you are. So I want to applaud you. And I want to say to all of your listeners, I want to give them a little gift for listening. So if they would email me at info, I-N-F-O, at willyjolly.com, or even simpler, let me tell them to go to the website, go to wjspeaks.com, wjspeaks.com, sign on, and let me know that they heard uh, they, they heard this message on this show. And we'll send them a little e- uh, e-gift, something of uh, the electronic, or you can just call our office at 202-723-8863, 202-723-8863, and we'll get your information. Uh, you leave a message or if somebody answers, and we will happy to send you one of our e gifts. It's an electronic wow. gift. So, because I just want to thank you, those who are listening, and I'm, I'm applauding you for what you're doing. So, just call 202-723-8863, or just go to the website wjspeaks.com, sign on, and let mm-hmm. us know that you heard us on the show. Now, getting back to your question, there are a lot of people going to be graduating. So, I always at graduation tell them they got to have three dreams, three D's, to live their destiny. I already told you one D, which you got to have a dream. Mm-hmm. Then you get number two D is you got to decide. You got to decide to stay away from negative people. That's going to have a profound impact on your success. Stay away from negative people. Don't get caught up in drama. Don't get caught up in all of the, all of what who said, who he said, she said, they said, this that. Don't get involved with it. Let them do that. You keep focus on your goal. Keep focus on your dream. And then the third D: dream, decide. And then the third one is you got to do. You got to take action. Two little birds were sitting on a, fly, uh, on, a, on a telephone wire. One of them decided that he was going to fly away. How many little birds you got left? Two. What? That's right, two. Because, mm. see, until you take action on your decisions, nothing happens. Mm. Lots of people say, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to start my company. I'm going to uh, write a book. I'm going to record an album. I'm going to I'm going to uh, do this. I'm going to do that. And they never do it because they talk about it but never take action. You mm-hmm. must take action. So dream the big dream. Make the tough decisions. Stay away from negative people. Don't 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 get involved with drama. Get away from them. If they're negative, if they're talking about people, they're probably talking about you behind your back. So negative people, leave them alone. And then third is you got to do. You got to take action. Dream, decide, and do. Hmm. Okay, we got a uh, caller nine on one. You on the air? Caller nine on one. Brother Rod. Yes, sir. It's uh, Brother Morris. Yes, sir. How you doing? How you doing? I'm alright. You remain saying we all be ready. You're a regular. You part of the crew. Well, well, you know, I I, I have to uh, agree with uh, what Mr. Jolly was saying is that you know for you to be at such a young age, I really appreciate you and what you're trying to do. Uh, for the community, I think that 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 speaks volumes about what what young people can do, and it's always it's always the young and, it, and historically that have that have really uh, set the bar for some of us who are getting a little bit older now, and so I I I, I really appreciate that, uh, but I wanted to, to to thank Mr. Jolly for all of his. Um, positive and um, very informative 
um, um, talk that he's been giving. And um, I guess one of the things that, that um, I'm always concerned about as I get older, you know, not that I'm an old man or anything, but as I get older, um, the things that that um, uh, I wish I would have done when I was younger, you know, sometimes come to pass. And and uh, I guess youth is wasted on the young, so they say. And um, um, I guess in our community, I, I guess when I made it out and I went to the service and all this kind of stuff, you know, you know, years ago. You know that was a big thing just to get out, and it, you know, and 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 you know, I'm I'm a little bit saddened that we don't have enough people in our community anymore to um, make this a rule rather than the exception. That it's like someone is escaping from from something instead of having a normal um, a normal um, out as far as uh, being having having positive people in your life and people who have been there who can guide you through. So mm-hmm. I hope I'm getting, I'm, I hope I'm making my, you know, making my, myself clear. Yeah. And, um, and it, you know, it, it seems like, you know, it, it's more of the, the, the exception than the rule. And, and, you know, those are some of the things that I would like to see, see change. Um, and uh, it's cause, because it's, you know, if you get one out at a time, two out at a time, I mean, that's, that's not a lot of progress, and, right? Um, and and you know people like James Brown and and Louis Armstrong. You know, of course, I appreciate everything they did, and and uh, I understood the the challenges that they that they had to deal with. But they were the exception because most of us, without an education, and uh, seeing some of the and growing up in the type of environment that they grew up in, most of us are not going to make it out. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna survive that that environment. And so, um I I, I know what you're doing, Mr. Jolly. I mean I you know, that's obvious, but um I guess what I'm trying to say is is that what can we do to get our community back? And and what I'm saying is in, in regards to that is see when I was a kid, I think I told Ron this, uh when I was a kid um, I had a, I knew where all my teachers lived, you know, every single one of them, you know, because they all lived in my community. I mean, I knew, you know, we had we had a we had a black pharmacist. We had, you know, we had a black grocery store. You know, we had um, uh, there was a pharmacist, Mr. Henry, who lived next door to me. So I had some role models. Now, I mean, I still got drawn off into some things I probably shouldn't have, but there were there were things for me to draw back on, and I think that that's really what's missing in, in our community. And we are, you know, there's there's not too many people like that in the in the in the community in the black community anymore. And we've left the community, you know, to the drug dealers, and you know they have become the leaders in the community because of a lack of of leadership on. On uh, the rest of us, I guess. So, um, but there's I a want... little piece in my book that makes me think of this. Um, mm-hmm. and it's something that inspired me. It's in my book. It only takes a minute to change your life. And I want to encourage everybody who's listening to go to wjspeaks.com and get a copy of both my books. It only takes a minute to change your life, and a yeah. setback as a setup for a comeback. Because these books will inspire you. There's a little piece that, that talks about a lady who had wanted to change the world, but she felt the world was too big. But she huh. said, I just changed my city. Yeah. But she said, no one will listen to me. Then she said, well, maybe I'll change my family. And she said, oh, but they never paid me any attention. And so she just gave up. Mm-hmm. And then on her deathbed, she realized, that if she had just changed herself, hmm. she would have changed her family. Yeah. And if her family could be changed, then they could help her to change the city and the community. And if that city and community could be changed, then they could change the country. And the country could be changed. Country could be changed. Then the world could be changed. Now, yeah. some would say, "Oh, that's that's really 
uh, idealistic thinking. That would never happen. Oh, wow, really? How about a lady named Mother Teresa? She yeah. said, I'm going to change myself, and I'm just going to kneel down and help this one dying man put some water in his mouth as he dies on the streets of Calcutta. And by doing that, she changed herself, and in essence, she changed the world. So I'm encouraging everybody to do what you can do with your little space. I, I, I wish I could have access to every young man in the country and, 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 and get them all to see and think and act the way I, I, I think. But they don't, it, ain't gonna, it doesn't happen that quick. But, oh, but, i tell you one thing, but. The big but is this. The but is that, that it only takes one of us making a commitment that we're going to go out and give our best that day and do what we can in our space, in our lane. And we're going to do something that will make a difference. So I want to encourage you. I want to thank you, first of all, for calling in and supporting this young fellow here who is doing such a great work there. But I want to also encourage each and every one of you and yourself and everybody, including myself, when I, pre when I say this to you, I say it to me, that we do what we can with what we got. You know, when you, when right. Penn said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, to all the people you can, for as long as ever you can, because that is what you can do. And then you've done all you could do. You know, H.L. Williams says it uh, Williams says like this. He says, if, he says, all you can do is all you can do. <laughs> and all you can do really is enough as long as you do all you can do. Okay, mm -hmm. so we, we make a commitment today that we're going to do all we can do. And when we do all we can do, we've done all we can do. All right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate those books, that. Go to my website, get those books, and, and if you put a little note on there and say, yeah, I want an autographed copy, we'll get them autographed and, and some things to just keep you motivated and inspired. Thank you for your, your input, and thank you for your, what you're doing for the community. Well, thank you. Uh-huh. All right. And, Mr. Jolly, I also want to know, I know you're speaking about motivating, doing what you can do, what you got. How do you stay motivated? Cause I know it must got to be some days when you feel kind of like, you know what I'm saying, down and out. Or maybe you don't anymore. I don't know. I don't have those days. You don't have those days? I don't days. have those days. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. I believe that, I believe that uh, happiness mm -hmm. is, you, you know, Abraham Lincoln said, you're just about as happy as you want to be. Mm -hmm. And he was right. We, we're going to be just about as happy as we want to be, and stuff is going to happen, but it's our choice and attitude. So the answer to your question is, how do I keep going and not have those days? I work on my attitude every day. Mm -hmm. I work on it every single solitary day, and I, have to, I, I develop a reservoir from which to draw from when things don't go the way I want them, when things are uncomfortable, when, when life throws me a curveball. Has it been easy? No. The day my mother died. It was challenging. And then mm -hmm. uh, that 25 days later, my only brother died. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, it was a challenging month. I mean, I lost my mother and my brother within a month. And I had to mm -hmm. funeralize all of them and give a eulogy uh, to all of all of that. And it was painful. It was challenging. I was, I was hurting. But I had to make a decision. You know, Maya Angelou says it like this. She says, if there's something in your life you don't like, change it. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot change it, change your attitude. And so I had to change my attitude. I had to get a new attitude. And once I got this new attitude, I said, okay, I got a new attitude here. I wish I could change it. I wish I could uh, have them come back. I wish, you know, I, I, I wish I had control over that. But since I don't, I got to do with what I've got. And that, that's what I've got to, to do to make this happen. And so I'm encouraging everybody here who's listening can't change it, change your attitude. Work on your attitude. That's why you got to listen to positive material. Read positive books every single day. Because you, you're being bombarded with negative information first thing every day. Every single day you're getting told how many bad, how many bad things happen in life. How many little children died. How many uh, planes crashed. How many shootings there were on college campuses. How many negative, evil people are out here doing negative, crazy, stupid, uh, uh, idiotic stuff for no reason, snatching little children and all that kind of foolishness. But it, it, if, it, if you're not careful, it'll eat you up. See, negative has an impact. You know, think about the day you hear that you hear that, that shooting at that college, how it made everybody feel. Oh, yeah. 
made everybody feel bad. Mm-hmm. I'm so, What I'm sorry. No, no. So I just say that's why you got to fill yourself with the pure, the powerful, and the positive. And that way, you, you your days when you have those kind of those those negative experiences, you it won't it won't it won't cast you into a a valley of despair. You'll say, mm-hmm. I don't I don't like it. I, I I'm I'm saddened by it. I'm saddened by it, but. I also know that if I can't change it, I change my attitude. Hmm. I, you, know, you know, it's interesting like, to hear you speak and stuff like that. I mean, it's very powerful because to me, what you're saying is, in my mind, I don't know, I mean, it's a, this is a spirit war we fight. And it's a spiritual warfare. It's not necessarily the flesh. But it's like everything it comes out the spirit. You know what I'm saying? You think, therefore, I am. Like, your mentality and your spirituality has a lot to do with how, you, how your physical ends up for you. Right. And like I like to say, like, you know, you being a musician and you being a performer, like, I know a lot of times us entertainers and artists, we need people to, you know what I'm saying, to cheer us on, to feed our egos and stuff like that. But I'm sure once you started picking this life or this path that you're currently on, I'm sure that people that you thought were your friends got kind of turned off by what you was doing, or is it the opposite? Well, they didn't understand it. They, they, well, I wouldn't say turned off. They just didn't understand it. They couldn't mm-hmm. figure out what, what was up with me. Mhm. Okay, they couldn't figure out what was happening with me. Why? What's up with Willie? What's up with him? You know, he. he why he sitting up? Why he reading those books? You know, why he listening to those tapes all the time, man? What's wrong with him? Why ain't he hanging out with us no more? You know, what's up with that, man? You know, um. And so they 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 just didn't understand it. But in time, they came to understand it because they saw the results in my life. You know, people don't understand until they see the results in their life. When I had my last job and I told them I was going to leave and become a full-time speaker, they mm-hmm. thought I lost my mind. You're going to do what? I mm-hmm. I'm going to become a full-time speaker. You think somebody's going to pay you to talk? Mm-hmm. Man, you, you lost your mind. They took me to lunch that day <laughs> and, I, and I need every meal I could get. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you got but, to laugh it to the bank, though. You laugh it to the bank. Well, you know what? But I believed in my dream. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, some years later, they all came back and said, how did you do it? What was the mm-hmm. secret? Man, you did. I left in a beat-up old car with my with the floorboards that were had rusted out. <laughs> wow. And, and, uh, and, and yet I came back with a Mercedes. Wow. And so... When I came back, I said, this was not because I was smarter than anybody. It's because I just decided to live my dreams. Hmm. But, like, you know, so it took, for you to live your dream, you had to go give everybody else's advice on info. Like, so how, you know, like, you know, like, you know people don't really understand, like, it's like the people that get things done in this world are, are usually so-called extremists. You know, they right. really dedicate to what they're doing. They don't have to necessarily mean a bad word, extremism. extremism. I think about John Coltrane towards the end, how he was so dedicated to that vision he had, you know, for his music. So, like, like how can, um, let's see, how can people, like, I'm going to ask you this a music question when you're entertaining. Are you glad that you, your motivation was speaking to God before your music did, or I, I, I know that on? God's will, so okay. I'm very glad. See, if it was my will, I would have done it my way. <laughs> well, Frank's not, See, but but God's way is always better than my way, and I've learned how to trust Him. Mm-hmm. In my book, a setback is a setup for a comeback. I tell the story of how I was a nightclub singer. I probably would, if I hadn't gotten fired and, and from my job as a nightclub singer, I'd still be doing that now, making you know probably five hundred dollars for for all night long singing in dark, dank, smoke filled nightclub, and I had to split the money up with the band. Oh, so, yeah. you know, I'd probably come home with $150, and I was, I, I, I didn't, I was working so much, though, so, you know, I was, I, I was able to get a, a little house and, and so forth, but, you know, I, I, I didn't know any matter, better, that was, how, that was the rate of my thinking at that point, you know, that was the way everybody else who was a good singer could do it, they just would get a little place to sing, and they do all they can to wait for somebody to discover them, but mm-hmm. when I didn't, it didn't work that way, and I got fired because it was cheaper to get a machine, a karaoke machine. Oh I, I was discouraged. Uh, mm-hmm. I was disappointed. But I said, you know, this ain't the end of the story. So I started listening to motivational tapes and reading motivational books. 
And in one of those books, I, I get, started getting inspired that there was something bigger and better and greater within me and not to give up. And that is when I started looking at other options. I took a job with the school system. And as part of my job, I had to talk to little kids about staying away from drugs, and I discovered an ability to use words. And once I discovered this ability to use words, from there, the teachers said, come speak for our group. And, and then I'd go speak for them, and they'd say, come to my church. And I'd go to their church, and someone in the church would say, come speak for our group. And I'd go speak for them, and then Les Brown and Gladys Knight were doing a tour. They heard about the fact that I mixed music and motivation, and they invited me to be on tour with them. And that gave me national exposure, and I got a radio show, and it got syndicated, and a publisher heard about me on the radio and, and invited me to do a book. I did my first book, and it became a bestseller. It only takes a minute to change your life. Then the second book, second book, a setback and set up for a comeback, became a bestseller. And then mm. my youth video came out with PBS, and, and that became a bestseller. And then um, my Chicken Soup for the Christian Soul came out with me and Joyce Meyer on the front cover. And then mm. uh, my new music came out, Money, money, money Making Music, and, and I've won the top speaker of the year, and I've been inducted in the Speaker Hall of Fame, and, and I've traveled as far away as Australia, New Zealand, Japan. I'm on my way to Nigeria in a few weeks. All because I got fired, and, and, and I went beyond thinking what was best for what I wanted to do, and said, God, all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. So it's about your attitude and your faith, and I, I decided to walk a faith walk. And I believe God, I know where He's given me a vision where I'm going to go, but it doesn't always go the way I want it to go to get there. I might have to do some different roles. I always wanted to inspire people. I always wanted to encourage people. I thought I'd do it through music. I never thought I'd do it through speaking. But now I'm able to do it through both. What a blessing. And so I'd like to ask you this, too, because, I mean, this is what's so beautiful about your message, because you actually are doing the walk and talking the talk. But then, like, you also had a family, a mortgage, and only $200 at the bank when you left your job. So what did you tell your wife to keep her from leaving you with the kids? <laughs> I got a great wife. That's first of all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a wonderful wife, and uh, and I'm very thankful for her. And so uh, I am a blessed man because of that. And so uh, that's a big part of my success is my bride. But she, she believed in my dream, okay? Mm -hmm. Bottom line, she just believed in my dream. I mean, and, it's wonderful. And because she believed in my dream, we've been able to make it. And now she runs my company, and we travel around the country. And and so I'm very thankful. What about the in-laws? They say, this guy's crazy. You know, my in-laws believed in me, too. I'm very wow. thankful okay, well, for wow. them, too. Okay. okay. Yes. Well, you're just a blessed man, then. <laughs> I am a blessed man. But you know what, Thomas, let me tell you, let me tell you what, uh -huh. what, what makes that uh, is because Everything, I, I believe that your, your word should be your bond. Mm -hmm. And if you speak it out of your mouth, you've got to find a way to make it become a reality. Mm -hmm. So when I married my wife, I got married. First got married, I told her, I said, in a year, I'm going to buy you a house. Now, I was a nightclub singer. I didn't have, I, it was, it was, it was, that was a, a crazy even thought. I spoke it. And I just worked extra hard so that that word would come true. And a year from when we got married, I bought our house. Wow. And when my in-laws saw that, they saw that I was a man of integrity. That if I speak it, it's gone, done. Just like I'm on with you. You, you didn't have to chase me or harass oh, no, me. No, sir. I was, I was I, very much I said amazing. I'd do it. And, I, you know, I, I, you called and I met your mother. And I said, she's got a great son and I want to do it. You called me and said, Are you going to do it? I said, yeah, I'm going to do it. And that's all Good. you needed. All right, that's all you needed. And once I say it, it's done. So my in-laws saw that. They saw you know that, what? and they said, this guy is, is about what he's saying he's going to do. So I, I mean, there's a lesson in there, which is, the lesson in there is whenever you create a reputation, create a reputation for excellence and integrity. That's right. It follows you everywhere. And it, and it opens doors that you you don't understand why they're opening. That's a, like a, you got any last words? I know uh, you said your website is www.wjspeaks.com. www.wjspeaks.com. Please go and send me an email. We'll send you a little gift to everybody who's listening. And if you want to buy the books, just order them right online and and uh, make this the best best year ever. I want to leave you with this. Yes, sir. 
I want to leave you with this little thought. I was on a plane. I was struggling in my business. Coming back, I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. There's a gentleman across the aisle from me, older gentleman. We struck up a conversation. He must have sensed that I was struggling in my business. He said, young man, don't be discouraged. I said, okay. And then he took off his glasses and he looked at me and said, young man, how old do you think I am? I said, I, I get you, about 50, 60 years old. You look like you're 60 to me, baby. He said, young man, I'm 88 years old. 88, wow. 88 oh my years God. old. Uh -huh. He said, listen here, my best is yet to come. Hmm. And when he said that, it changed my life. When a man who's 88 years old can see that his best years are in front of him and not behind him, then what did I have to complain about? What did I have to, com to whine and cry about? Because I was having a tough time. He had the optimism and the faith to believe that his best years were in front of him. And if he could say that, Lord knows I could do it. And I went back home and I got busy. So I'm saying to all of you who are listening here tonight, or wherever you may be, your best is yet to come. Go for it and live your life with passion and power. Live your life with enthusiasm and excitement. Live life to the fullest. And remember that as you give, so shall it be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. Give and be give without expecting anything particular in return. Just know that as you give, so shall it be given unto you. So I want to say thank you for letting me be on with you. Remember, go to wjspeaks.com. Send me an email if you want to reach my office, 202-723-8863. And I look forward to meeting and seeing all of you when I come to your cities. Make sure you come up and say hello to me. Have a great oh, day. Thank you, Mr. Willis Jolly. Thank you. And that's it for We All Be Radio.